Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to GNN. You're still watching CSR. I'm attorney Sarah Sugitan, standing in for Mr. Larry Bruard. We have here on the second part of the show, one Filipino who should be a hero, multi-awarded and uh, multi-distinguished architect and urban planner, architect Felino June Palafox. Welcome to the show, architect urban planner yeah. Palafox. Thank you for inviting me, attorney Sarah. Mm -hmm. and glad well, to be here. Yes, and thank you for uh, well telling us that you have an upcoming event uh, this Friday. You said you are the president of the Philippine Institute of urban planning. Yeah, urban planning or environmental planning. Or environmental planning. Yes, and, right? and, uh, and Friday, November 8th, is World Town Planning Day. World Town Planning yeah. Day. Yeah, quite a short notice. It was supposed to be held in Cebu, mm -hmm. but Cebu canceled it because of the situation there. Yeah, the weather. So we, we have to hold it here. Unfortunately, there's been good response. Mm -hmm. We'll be talking about... It will be uh, well attended, I hope. I mean, it's yeah, very relevant. Very, despite the short notice, there are so, so many confirmed already. Mm -hmm. Because we'll talk about... Uh, disaster uh, preparedness, preparedness and uh, de uh, sustainability in development. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about uh, global best practices in uh, urban planning, mm -hmm. uh, uh, vertical urbanism, tall buildings and urban habitat, vertical urbanism. Uh, reclamation oh, versus inland development, the new environmental planning law, mm -hmm. and among many others. So it's so timely and uh, so relevant. Well, so many people texted me quite a short notice. They would have wanted to attend. But in spite of that, many, many have, have confirmed, confirmed to attend, even from friends from the media. Mm -hmm. So th that's happening this Friday? This Friday at uh, the Asian time? Institute of Management, mm -hmm. 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Everyone's invited, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, you can join the conversation. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, th this is a very relevant... I think urban planning will always be relevant. Yeah. Uh, architecture will always be relevant because we're always building structures. We always need to update our structures and also to, right now, because the populations are growing and the uh, urban cities are just sprouting up probably yeah. without any any planning at all. Uh, like, for example, uh, architect, the, the calamity in Bohol, many structures, well, mostly churches, have um, well been destroyed by the quake. Do you think there was urban planning that happened in, could that have been prevented or is yeah. that really an act of God? That we'll we we'll discuss it also on Friday, but mm -hmm. one of the things we'll discuss, lessons learned from Bohol. Mm -hmm. So we should take lessons from, like buildings that have been built more than 20 years ago, there should be a, a, a structural audit. Mm -hmm. Like those big churches, yes. they have thick walls and thick columns. They could be retrofitted with reinforcing bars to reinforce them. Like uh, the Manila Cathedral and San Agustin Church, they have been retrofitted every now and then. And a lot of questions are, are coming up, like, like, uh, like questions like, should we retain the ruins or should we retrofit them? Yeah. For me, I'd rather Build wait new. for a geologic study, very detailed, mm -hmm. to make sure those structures don't have sinkholes. Or, yes. or fault lines underneath them. Then we decide. Mm -hmm. Because um, one option is build new churches. Just let the ruins as they are. Mm -hmm. Just like the Roman Colosseum. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Or the it's church facade in Macau. Mm -hmm. It's just the facade of the, the church. St. Paul ruins, yeah, yes. Yeah. They're, they're ruins. They weren't yeah. rebuilt or anything. So both. The schools of thought, rebuild them, retrofit them. The other one is just leave them yeah, as they, they are, as tourist destinations. Mm -hmm. And lessons to be learned for Manila. Metro Manila. If the same magnitude 7.2 scale would happen in Metro Manila, mm -hmm. the Myers report, mm -hmm. 2004, mm -hmm. Metro Manila Earthquake Impact Reduction Study, mm -hmm. funded by Japan, JICA, mm -hmm. has, uh, has uh, concluded that in their study, mm -hmm. if an earthquake magnitude 7 or, or higher happens in Metro Manila right now, more than 50,000 people will get killed. Because Third, of falling structures. 35,000 no because of the earthquake, 18,000 because of the, the fire that will break after the earthquake. Metro Manila will be divided into four segments, mm -hmm. north and south of the Pasig River, and about seven bridges will fall down, east and west of the fault line. Mm -hmm. And I've been saying that we have a 70-kilometer fault line. Mm -hmm. from seven Angat, kilometer fault 70, line. 70, 70. From Angat Bulacan up to Tagaytay. Wow, goes through Bulacan, Metro Manila, Long Laguna, Fortnite. and so on. And I have been telling, saying this, we should have maintained them as a, a linear park, mm -hmm. non-buildable, non-saleable. Non mm -hmm. In fact, along that fault line, I master plan a community there. Mm -hmm. The first thing I did was I went to Fieldbox, the mm -hmm. former Unung Bayan, had a Fieldbox. I, mm -hmm. I asked, 
I asked him to redline the, su line. the subdivision that uh -huh. we were going to master plan. Mm -hmm. So he redlined, the, he marked the fault line. Mm -hmm. I made it as an open space mm -hmm. park and playground, non-buildable, non-sellable. Non but if you, if you go to that 70 kilometer fault line, mm -hmm. so many buildings Parts were, of it are probably so many were sold and built on. Mm -hmm. And you start to wonder why. Oh, why were they allowed? Was building it officials zone? allowed them, and mm -hmm. it takes about 44 signatures to put up a building in this country. <laughs> how, I mean, how did they get permits, right? Yeah, if that's, that's right. A, it's the, that's a buildable, non-buildable, non yeah. and uh, non-sellable non -sellable, uh, yeah. area. Don't we have zoning laws for We that? have. In a more progressive countries with political will. With political will, underline, yes. They would have marked the fault line with... Uh, with uh, surveying monuments, or even mark the buildings with red lines. This is along the fault line. Mm -hmm. And even, even now, we should not postpone it anymore. All is of these structures should be identified now and may, may be given a non-compliance certificate mm -hmm. that they have not complied. Mm -hmm. We should not postpone it anymore. Then every street, house by house, office by office, street along by street, mm -hmm. we should already have a disaster pre prevention preparedness uh, task force or something mm -hmm. like in your street mm -hmm. maybe your barangay captain should start inventorying now in the street mm -hmm. the in structural integrity of all the houses or all the buildings and where's your evacuation area mm -hmm. because in the more progressive countries with political will with political <laughs> will and uh, good planning and good governance mm -hmm. there should be at least one square meter per person of evacuation area Square, so if we are 14 million uh, uh, Metro Manilans, do we have 14 million square meters of evacuation area? Mm -hmm. And these evacuation areas in communities should be at around 10 hectares each. Mm -hmm. And that 10 hectare evacuation area, open space, mm -hmm. you, we should have an uh, emergency clinic, mm -hmm. emergency water station, water station. emergency <laughs> food station, emergency shelter, and a helipad. For, I, yeah, for even the richest people. cities in our country, I don't think they have that. Mm -hmm. Like my office is in Ayala Avenue, and um, we are on the 10th floor. And I was told uh, the fire trucks of Makati is only up to, we are on the 11th floor, only up to 10th floor. Mm -hmm. So we have to teach our people how to break the glass. glass uh, to uh, the unlike what happened with the hostess taking in the bus in Luneta, mm -hmm. we know how to break the glass. That's mm -hmm. the four corners of the window, mm -hmm. not the middle of the glass. Mm -hmm. And then we taught our people rappelling, so we can rappel down to from Ayala the Avenue floor, yes, on from the, the 11th ground. floor. We identified the nearest evacuation area would be the Legaspi Village Park across here. Mm, yes, but I was calculating, the open space. before the employees of Makati go down there, it's not enough. So I now identified for our office the best evacuation area and is, is the Ayala South Avenue. Cemetery. South Cemetery. Roads and streets are not supposed to be evacuation areas. Because, and not evacuation because there will be emergency vehicles passing ah, through. So you have to keep that clear. Keep it uh, clear keep for it. ambulances, fire trucks, police cars, and emergency vehicles. We yeah. should not make streets or evacuation areas. It should be open spaces. Open spaces. Like uh, parks and playgrounds, cemeteries, golf courses, and you all know, of those. You know, I just realized parks are very important. Here in the Philippines, parks become squatting areas, you know, which uh, yeah. we cannot use in times in times. Squatting of area for the urban poor, for and, the urban, poor and, uh, and the urban rich, they build on it. And the urban rich, <laughs> yes, confiscate and build on it when the, we shouldn't yeah. be building on But you know, that's a, that's a very, um, very scary thought for me because in Makati, we we have fire preparedness. They have fire drills left yeah, and right. Yeah. But this is not sufficient when in when in a time of, uh, for example, they, earthquake. If a uh, magnitude of seven earthquake yeah. hit Metro Manila, there are so many things to consider yeah. other than just leave the building as yeah. you were teaching. E your even staff. the, even the, the Myers report said uh, that if that magnitude seven would happen. Mm. 30 or 40 percent of low rise and medium rise buildings will collapse. Will collapse. Two percent of tall buildings. Because tall buildings, they normally follow all the codes, and they're more careful. In the, they get professionals to design the buildings. Mm -hmm. Low-rise buildings, mid, medium-rise buildings, they just get anybody else, yeah, non-professionals. Mm -hmm. And with those, uh, with those data gathered in 2004, mm -hmm. which I understand is being updated now. But still relevant today. Still relevant. They should be identified. Yeah. And another one is, uh, I hope I can say this in your show, and I've been studying it in international studies, Countries that are more corrupt, mm. countries that have more poverty, poverty all things being equal, will have more casualties. casualties. 
let's so say you direct correlation you, yeah. may direct correlation so all things being equal uh, mm. let's say you benchmark it with the same earthquake magnitude in Japan or California oh, yes. oh. there will be more cas casualties in countries that are corrupt and yeah, have more poor. poverty mm. because we're not prepared we're and, uh, and I've, I've been saying prepared. this a long while and I was accused of being an alarmist by one deputy presidential spokesperson <laughs> accusing me as a uh, Alarmist, but I'd rather be alarmed yes. than, than dead. Prevention and is always better than but cure. Now, now is the time now to sound it, the alarm. It's an uh, affirmation. MMDA just mm -hmm. admitted they are not prepared, mm -hmm. and they're preparing now. And the 84 recommendations, I sent the former president and this uh, mm -hmm. new president, when he called us his boss, mm -hmm. July 7, 2010, I sent him 84 recommendations mm -hmm. addressing disasters through urban planning, architecture, and engineering. Mm -hmm. So friends in the media now are using those recommendations as a checklist. What has government done? <laughs> what has government done? And in your checklist, that 84 item checklist, I think what has government done? I think done? they've done, they done five of them. One is the hazard mapping, the project NOAA. That's, mm. that's very good. But can they comply within the six-year term of the no, president? I don't, they only have 1,000 days remaining. And yeah, to the end oh, of the, of the One term. thing we have in this country is with the stigma of short-termism, short-term. Mm, yes. And I other countries you. in the world, again, the more progressive thinking societies, mm -hmm. they have an immediate, immediate action program, mm -hmm. short-term, mm -hmm. medium-term, short and long-term. Mm -hmm. Because we have too much politics, our development milestones are, are, uh, get stuck with election short years, mm -hmm. three years, six years. And elsewhere in the world, every five years, they, they update their plans. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, somebody was saying uh, number six is uh, they only use that in, in gambling. Mm. <laughs> and, and <laughs> normally, <laughs> normally, I don't know which gambling is. Normally, it's five year cycles. Mm. Five year continuing cycles, plans. Projects, yeah. yes. Yeah. Oh. And, and they have to continue what the previous administration has started yeah. or what they have in hand when they, get, uh, when they serve into office, when they enter into that, public that, that's office. That's right. One thing we don't have is institutional memory. No, we don't. And especially we, if uh, we don't like the previous administration, we junk it. Only yeah. to repeat it again when you, yeah. <laughs> you Like implement. people complain about traffic and transportation. Mm. 1945, the American Corps of Engineers, before they left the country, they made a major total first plan for Metro Manila. Mm. Six circumferential roads and ten major roads. Mm. Until now, we haven't Not seen the light of day for circumferential road number six. Mm. Circumferential road number uh, three is still incomplete. The missing link is Buendi Ayala and Araneta Avenue in Quezon City. Mm. That's the missing link. 1975-77, uh, I was team leader of the World Bank funded Metro Plan Manila. That's where we Metroplan. recommended more than 300 recommendations, one of which was the LRT. Mm -hmm. The past 13 years, not mm -hmm. a single kilometer of LRT was Derail. done. No, the airport, mm -hmm. Naia. Oh my gosh. We, we did the, the master plan. In we the did the master plan in 2004, together with SGB and Pacific Consultants of Japan and Palo Fox Associates, without corruption, I mm -hmm. must say. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we recommended was extend the life of the Naia for 15 to 25 years, while wait for Clark International Airport to mature, to mature. Mm. nothing was done. Nothing. Now everybody's complaining about the airport. Oh, no. So, mm. so, longer handle so I, uh, we have to, like, I was a guest speaker in international conferences at tall buildings in Singapore mm. uh, 10 days ago. We were waiting three hours on the runway. In here, in here, Naia 1? Naia 1. Oh, three hours mm. waiting for the runway. Mm. And you can oh, see oh, the airplanes, oh, really, yeah. they're in traffic. Yeah, and only three hours, ten minutes flying time to Singapore. To Singapore, so oh my gosh. The, the longest so journey and... Is uh, the waiting. I was <laughs> quoted in the media the because I really complain about it. I texted seven of my friends in the cabinet and I told them that I've been to 200, uh, airports. 200 airports in 63 countries. Mm -hmm. And I confirmed that Naia is the worst airport in the world. The world. Mm. It deserves that distinction. Yeah, I confirmed that uh, <laughs> personal experience. Mm -hmm. Yes, but, but this can be changed. I mean, as you said, yeah, but the plan was done in 2004. 2004, nine, nine years ago. Nine years ago. ago. Yes. Circumferential road number six was before I was born, mm. 1945. <laughs> the LRT was 1975. And until now, it's not complete. Yeah. Yes, all of these are overburdened yeah. because the population is growing. The capacity of these road networks are no longer allow and them to, uh, they're no longer capable to carry. And we should not just home. blame population. It's more a population distribution. You know, the 7 billion population of the world, seven if we follow the density of Hong Kong, 
and Hong Kong, mind you, 75% open space. But if you use the density of Hong Kong, all the 7 billion population of the world, we can all fit in the state of Texas. <laughs> so it's really mm. population distribution. distribution. And one of my term papers in Harvard yeah, okay. was uh, Manila Megalopolis 2020. And by That's in seven years, yeah, 2020. 2020. I'm adjusting 2021 because 2021, the Philippines will be 500 years old. Manila will be 450 years old. Mm -hmm. And my recommendation there was create growth centers outside Metro Manila yes, as a counter magnet. Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, Clark San Fernando Metropolis, Subic, uh, Subic uh, Longapo, Longapo, Batangas Metropolis, Even San Pablo Metropolis, North. Lucena, Lawag Metropolis, Vigan Metropolis, mm -hmm. Cebu Metropolis, uh, mm -hmm. Cagayan de Oro and Davao. Mm -hmm. Make them stronger growth centers or counter magnets to Metro Manila. Mm -hmm. And planning is balanced. Everything in our country is imbalanced. Mm, yes, There's I so agree. much the primacy of Metro Manila. There's a parasitic relationship mm. between Metro Manila and, and the, the rest of the country. Mm. Even in Makati, it, mm. jobs and housing are so imbalanced. Mm. People complain about traffic. Mm. The daytime population of the central business district of Makati is 11 times the nighttime population. You have to bring in the 11 times population in the morning, in the morning. bring them out in the evening. Mm. Why? Because you, you just like have a Fifth Avenue in New York or, or, uh, or Wall Street surrounded by Hollywood and Beverly Hills. Because you have low density gated communities uh, around. around strangulating the CBD. Mm -hmm. The same thing in Ortega Center surrounded by low density gated communities. Mm -hmm. Elsewhere in the world, close to the place of work should be higher density. So that you have more people within walking distance to place of work. Mm -hmm. The average employee of uh, Metro Manila spend 1,000 hours a year in traffic. Mm, the better oh planned gosh. cities in the world, only 300 hours a year in traffic because of mm, the, the bad planning, mm. imbalance the between imbalance. jobs and housing. Mm. In fact, I was just in a conference at Urban Land Institute in San Diego, California. Urban Land Institute, a very active member, headquartered in, in, in Washington, D.C. First time since 1946, a survey among Americans mm. From 1946 until last year, the preferred residential location of American was a big house in the suburb with a big car. Mm -hmm. This year suburb. it changed. They'd rather, they live, they'd rather live in a compact residential home, Near close to place of support. work, mm -hmm. bikeable, walkable to transit, mm -hmm. to shopping, dining, worship, and learning. Mm -hmm. Even the American dream, which we have been copying, yes. has changed in a survey done this year. But, but you think, uh, well, as you said, uh, the ideal would be in a uh, high density, well, yeah. or urban, urban areas. Yeah. The, the place of work is, oh, well, the, the homes are closer to the place yeah. of work. That's how Walkable, we designed, bikeable. yeah. We were the master planner and the architects of the first five towers of Rockwell. When we were do designing and master planning Rockwell, a survey was done. Mm -hmm. We met to Manilans, we walk only 400 meters. <laughs> Five minute walk. Beyond that, we take or a stop anywhere. We take a jeep, uh, jeepney, <laughs> we take a taxi. tricycle, chauffeur driven car, taxi. Mm. That's why if you live in Rockwell, if you're lucky enough to live there, mm -hmm. everything is within a five minute walk or 400 meters. Mm -hmm. I hope that that concept will be, will be implemented not just in the first class, but the business class, yes. the economic class, the economic and the class. urban poor areas. Yes. So we have more walkable, more bikeable communities. Makati is being bannered as a tourism city, global city. Any tourist destination city in the world, you spend more time in the sidewalks than the museum. Mm. You walk in Makati, you are run over by cars. Yes. In fact, I just recommended the in the <laughs> meeting right now of tourism committee for Makati, I told them, maybe the building officials of Makati should go around Makati in a wheelchair. <laughs> then let's so fix our, fix our like. sidewalk. Yes. Maybe we should have more elevated walkways mm. interconnecting because it's faster to walk rather than take the car. Mm. Yeah. Yes, oh, I agree with you. All those in charge of, of, well, not only the MMDA, but everyone in charge, everyone. All, especially the government, should try walking the entire Metro Manila, yeah. even the other cities outside Metro Manila, so that they know what it's like to be a commuter, how it's not even walkable, bikeable. It's not, you know, it's not an ideal place to work and live in because it's, as I said, it's imbalanced everywhere. Imbalanced, like... Uh, the roads are not yeah. good enough. 1998, we had a big conference among American... Uh, Association of Planners in Boston. Mm -hmm. You know what was the two things I learned there, provocative ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, they say, if you have a big house in the middle of the city, you have a higher uh, carbon footprint 
or environmental footprint because you are preventing more families to live closer to their places of work. You are encouraging more urban sprawl to encroach into the forest, into the farms. Mm -hmm. So if you have a big house, you in must be suburbs. in the suburb. Mm -hmm. And if your house is it, in the middle of the city, city. you should make it multi-family, mm -hmm. so you accommodate more families to be walking distance to their place of work. Mm -hmm. So Makati or Metro Manila is how not to do it. Mm -hmm. We have 13 stations of uh, MRT along EDSA, mm -hmm. another case of how not to do it. Mm -hmm. When you have a transit station elsewhere in the world, mm -hmm. it's surrounded by high-density high place of work and place of, place of residence. So you have more people walkable distance from the transit station. You look at EDSA. Our transit station is surrounded by low density gated uh, subdivisions Militias. and Militias. gated military camps. Mm. So again, so what are, what are you doing EDSA in the is a classic case of how not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, unfortunately, we don't have enough time. But Architect Palafox, thank you so much for your information. For it. it's, a, it's a big learning experience even for me. And uh, as I said, you know, everyone who lives in Makati or even in Metro Manila, we spend 1,000 hours a year in traffic well, because of the imbalances. So we need to fix all of this. We need to uh, get a copy of the 84-point checklist that uh, Architect Palafox has submitted to the President. And we should measure our government. We should implement all of these things. Because otherwise, we will be wiped out by our own inefficiency, our own incapability, and our lack of political will. Thank you very much for joining us, and thank you very much, uh, Architect Palafox, for joining us right here on CSR. Tune in again next Wednesday right here on the Global News Network, GNN. This has been Attorney Sarah Sugitan, your host for tonight. Thank you for watching.